CT attacks. Please subscribe my channel for more tutorials. Thank you so much. Two common type of DHCP attack exist. One is known as DHCP starvation and the other is known as DHCP spoofing. Let's take a look at each of these. In our first example of DHCP starvation, we have an attacker on the network who sends out a DHCP discover message. Now that DHCP discover message is met with a DHCP response from the server saying, hey, you can use this address. If the client device decide to use it, he will go ahead and send a DHCP request saying, yes, please give that to me and he will get a DHCP acknowledgement saying the address is yours. That is the normal process for DHCP. But in this case, with our attacker, things are going to a little bit differently. What is going to happen is, rather than send a single DHCP discover message, that attacker is going to send, let's say, 200 DHCP discover message. And the, when the server receives each of these, he is going to look at the source MAC address. Where did they come from? Now that's the trick with this DHCP starvation attack. This attacker is spoofing. Remember that was another type of attack. He is spoofing the MAC address in each of these packet that he sent out. So the server now believe that he is getting 200 DHCP requests and he sends 200 DHCP offer back to the different MAC address. Now at that point, he's allocated those addresses. He's not going to give them to anybody else until he hears back on whether the client want to use them or not. Nobody is going to reply back. And if the spoofing keep happening and these DHCP requests messages keep happening, eventually we use all of the addresses in our DHCP pool. Now, when this legitimate clients come on and sends his DHCP discover message, that servers look and goes, well, I don't know what to tell you. I don't have any addresses available. And he just doesn't even respond. This real client then does the auto configuration of a 169 address and he can't get anywhere on the network because the DHCP server has been impacted by a DHCP starvation attack and cannot serve real user. Now the other type of attack that we use is a DHCP spoofing attack. So we have our real DHCP server, we have a real client, and then we have an attacker that's come onto the network now this could be in many forms. This could be a rogue access point that was plugged in. This could be someone running Kali Linux on virtual machine. This could be a router or a little home router that somebody brought in and plugged into the port at their desk. And so what happened is the client sends out a DHCP discover message. Well, before that message, which is a broadcast, could even make it to the DHCP server. This rogue sees it because the rules on which are, if it is broadcast, I flood it out of every port except the one it came in on. So what happened is the root DHCP server replies back and the clients take the address, sends a DHCP request and DHCP X comes back. Now the client has an IP that is not really part of your subnet uh, of part of our IP subnet. Well, who is this default gateway? Well, you guess it. It is this attacker right here. So now what happened? Well, again, just follow the process of the attack now. The client sends traffic to the gateway. It goes to the attacker. The attacker is using Wireshark or TCP dump or Jack the Ripper or whatever other application this attacker might decide to use to capture those packets and store them. But at the same time, he forward that onto the default gateway. Who can then forward that traffic on out to the internet or wherever else it may be going? The client has no idea that he is now part of another kind of attack. And you remember what? 
that attack was called if you are thinking man in the middle you are cracked so DICP spoofing attacks spoof that DICP server and ends up leading to man in the middle attacks one mitigation one mitigation technique that we might imply to protect against is called DICP snooping this feature is available in many switches especially available in Cisco switches that we do is we set up DACP snooping on a per VLAN basis. So let's say that these users here are a VLAN 10. Then what we are going to do is we are going to say that we want to do ACP snooping on VLAN 10. And once we have enabled it, we have to tell it which port we trust to receive DAC response from. The other ports will be untrusted. So when this client sends out the DACP request message, the DACP discover when that rogue DACP server gets it and he replies back, the port is not going to forward it because it's untrusted. Additionally, we can configure rate limiting on a port, which will prevent that attacker from initiating a DACP starvation attack. He won't be able to initiate enough DACP requests to starve out the address pool. So again, DACP snooping is the method on our switches that we would use to mitigate against these attacks. But those are our uh, those are two attacks: DACP spoofing and DACP starvation. Please subscribe my channel for more videos. Thank you.